Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Drink Deep and Descend. So, I was thinking, I have been talking about Union for quite a while, so why don't I talk about someone else in this episode? Then again, Union will get quite boring in the next couple centuries, so I might as well get an interesting topic. So, how about I talk about the On instead? Onik ascendancy in the 51st century is a holy star empire that's potentially an equivalent to the Union while being entirely independent due to their manipulation of firmament, a parallel space similar to blink space, with help from their physical god, Medhat On. Despite what you might be thinking, the Onik people are not a monolithic group. Hundreds of billions of people lived and died within this empire, and they are just as diverse in belief and culture as any human civilizations did. While they do have a literal physical god, whose power is clearly divine, they are just as human as any of us do, with goodness and flaws of their own. Anyway, Lich- What was that? We will be entering a chronologically unstable zone so things will change before our eyes. Did I stutter? The origin of the Onik people started within the belly of Armstrong, one of the ten launched by the pre-fall humanity. Armstrong has a sister ship, Rilia, which is rendered lore unimportant immediately because it went the way of the dinosaurs. For several millennia, Armstrong accelerated and decelerated on its journey to its destined Gaia world. Through the effect of relativity, time on board was only roughly 900 subjective years, but that's still a long time for humans who have such short lifespan. Sixty generations passed before the ship finally arrived at its destination, and with their whole world confined to such a small space, people gradually changed their belief. This shipboard faith is later codified into a collection called, the Ecumenical Book of the Path. So imagine, these people, since they were born, they were told that they are in this vessel that will one day take them to their promised land of beauty and freedom, a world of limitless space in every direction. For most of these people, they died before they could witness such world, and their children or even their children's children might not even have a chance to do so. Imagine, one day, the vessel has finally arrived at the paradise, and its beauty was beyond anything the holy book has told them about. And then they found out someone reached there first. So, remember what I said about how Union near light vessels far outstrip the 10 sub light drive in speed? Yeah, they are really fast. Not only that, the near light vessels are accelerating at such a high G, a human would turn into paste, which means even if Armstrong has such a drive, it would lose in a fair race, but this isn't a problem for the Union vessel because they didn't send anyone. The vessel didn't carry habitat, instead, it carried a germination facility along with a machine mind that could teach the first generation necessary education to colonize the planet. Essentially, these ships manufactured people, and Union were manufacturing colonies with them at an industrial scale. When Armstrong finally arrived at Anthem, the name the Union colonists gave to their promised holy world, a century has passed since the colony has been established on it. Initial contact between the two wasn't violent at first, but when the colonists refused to let the On from disembarking en masse from their ship to the planet, the On understandably got mad. After threatening to deorbit the colony ship and a short violent conflict, the colonists dropped the blockade and integrated with the On. After a journey that lasted millennia, the Onik people were finally home. In the next century, the Onik people expanded in both space and number as the ecumenical mandate. With reverse engineered Union technologies, on were able to fully map out Anthem, later called, on list, the All There Is, or the Garden. Though they did keep the name Anthem for their capital city instead. They even have interplanetary expedition on its various moons, the largest of which was named, On Yat. Basically, time was pretty good for On. Until their god showed up. <laughs> 